The usual way that people get around in the Bible is by walking. But sometimes people like Absalom get uppity and ride mules. That did not turn out well for Absalom. Perhaps rather than using the availing himself of the usual way of vision in the Bible, just looking around, maybe hair got in his eyes. I could understand that. Anyway, his uh, his transportation on a mule did not turn out well. Now, it is true that most of the time people get around uh, in the Bible by walking, even if it takes them 40 years, and they see by using their eyes, just like all the other critters that got eyes. But there are exceptions. Cornelius famously had a, a vision that he should... Uh, give give hospitality to Paul and and that would lead to to uh, Paul becoming the great missionary to the Gentiles at least according to Paul and and St. Luke Philip uh, while walking <laughs> met a met the Ethiopian eunuch and rode in his chariot for a while and then after explaining a bit of Isaiah to the eunuch and baptizing him. Philip was taken up in um, a mysterious, shall we say, way back, I think, to Jerusalem. And, of course, Ezekiel had about as many different visions and transportations as anyone, as anyone might, uh, might want to have. Uh, but a lot of people kind of take the attitude that, well, those things were fine for those days. You know, that was then, this is now. Nothing like that happened after the last page of, of uh, Scripture. Sola Scriptura, which is a fascinating concept in all kinds of ways, seems somehow often to be taken to mean that uh, mighty acts of God, shall we say, only happened within the pages of a book. I rather suspect that instead of that, the uh, things that happen in Scripture might be kind of a, a warning to us to, to watch out. You just never know what's going to happen. And one of the people to whom such an unusual thing happened was a, a wealthy widow in uh, Norfolk in the old kingdom of East Anglia in a little town called Walsingham, not far from the great seaport of King's Lynn. In 1061, when uh, good King Edmund the Confessor was still king of England, Rochelle's asked if uh, there was something that she could do to honor the Virgin. She asked this of Our, of Our Lady. And she was rewarded with a trip and a vision to Nazareth, where she was shown the house in which Mary had been living with her parents, Anna and Joachim, at the time of the Annunciation. And Our Lady asked Rochelles to build a copy of this house back in Walsingham. And Rochelles did. And it's kind of interesting. She, well, where do I build it? She asked. And there are two sites possible. And they started building it on one place, and the, it didn't work. They would cut the, the, you know, measure twice and cut once, and still the things wouldn't fit together. Rochelle just prayed again, and uh, the next morning the house had been moved to this other site. It was kind of like, you know, in uh, in Gideon, she had said, "Well, show me a place and." was due every place except two squares. So the house was built on the second place. And this kind of parallels the story of, of uh, the house at Loretto, because not long after uh, Rochelle's vision, uh, the, what can I say, they won't make in trouble with the algorithms, the <laughs> precursors of the evil Turk were in, you know, taking over the Holy Land again. 
and the original house was moved in a couple of leaps to, to where it now stands in the Redo. And there have been a lot of archaeological studies and measurements and so forth, and it's quite fascinating how much both the house at Loretto and the house at Walsingham seem to be to what the site, to, to the original house. The uh, house on Loretto is lower than the house at Walsingham was built. And uh, it's thought that that's because they made it a little longer than the house at Walsingham, and if they'd used those stones to make the wall higher instead of making the whole house longer, it would have been just the same size as the house at Walsingham. Uh, anyway, uh, this this little house gradually came to be an important pilgrimage site, uh, you know, especially as it was no longer to eat, uh, as it was no longer easily possible to make pilgrimages to Jerusalem or to Bethlehem. Uh, people would start making pilgrimages to the little house at Walsingham. And there was a, a rather famous uh, statue of Our Lady erected and, and put in, or carved and put in the church. And, and over the years it became really a very major and important pilgrimage center fourth important in the world after Jerusalem, which was hard to get to, Rome, which was far off, Compostela, which required a lot of walking, although people would walk from Rome to, to Walsingham, and then Walsingham. Uh, Rochelle's son, Geoffrey, invited a group of, of priors, um, friars, did I say priors? Friars. <laughs> not chicken friars, uh, uh, Franciscan brothers, to set a house there to, to, uh, to, 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 to make a priory there, a friary, to uh, welcome the, the pilgrims and, and care for them. And that grew to be quite a, a large establishment. And for 500 years, almost everyone who could did make the pilgrimage to Walsingham. Almost every English king, including Henry VIII, who I think went there six times or more, uh, including one time right after Catherine had given birth to a son, they had gone there to pray for a son. The son died, unfortunately. They have, uh, well, you know, Henry VIII is one of those people it's easy to call a tyrant and easy to say he fell into lust and greed and there certainly is some of that but I don't know maybe he was doing the best he could but whatever by the time of the reign of Henry I say this is about 500 years later 600 500 years later Henry got the marvelous idea that if he closed the monasteries, he could seize their property. And some of it he would use, and some of it he would sell. And, you know, we tend to, we tend to read history through very Protestant eyes. I recommend that you might read, if nothing else, The Stripping of the Altars by Eamon Duffy, uh, there was a lot of popular resistance to what Henry was doing, and particularly from the North, who, where they were staunch Catholics, where their Christianity had tended to have been brought to them from, from the monks of Ireland more than from, from uh, Canterbury and, and London. And they famously set out on the pilgrimage of grace. And, you know, I'm simplifying all this, but you can YouTube all this as easily as I Google it. Henry told them, oh yeah, we'll, we'll have a part and we'll talk about this. And, and of course he didn't, he killed everybody. And uh, this violation of his promise particularly angered the people in Walsingham. And there was an attempt to, to uh, 
I was not sure what they did, thought they would do. <laughs> at least resist the dissolution, the dissolution of Walsingham and the other other churches and shrines in in uh, in Norfolk, and they were betrayed. And at least two of the leaders were were hanged, drawn, and quartered on the in the grounds of the um, of the uh, priory. The prior of Walsingham, a name named Val, was able to buy off Henry's chief henchman, uh, Thomas Cromwell, with a hundred pounds, and so he he lived to die a natural death. But now all that is left of the priory is uh, one arch, and the grounds of the priory still belong to the descendants of the people who bought it from, from Henry and his henchmen. Although they do let people go there from time to time, especially on Wednesdays. <laughs> and the archaeologists have found the site of the house and the site of uh, the martyrdom and the like. And I don't want to go f too much into my thoughts on Our Lady of Walsingham in this video. I, I plan to make a more thorough one on the, uh, and put it up on the 15th of October. But today, the 24th of September, is one of the feasts of Our Lady of Walsingham. Look, the sun is coming out. And my camera is not, not doing a very good job of adjusting to the light. I'm beginning to be ghostly. Maybe that's a message. Maybe I should take this as a warning. Anyway, uh, there has been restored there uh, two shrines to Our Lady of Walsingham. And it is both a wonderful story and a really sad story. The reason it's wonderful is because this great devotion to Our Lady of Walsingham has been reestablished. Uh, but it is divided between the Anglican shrine and the Catholic shrine. And there's also a small Orthodox shrine there and a Methodist shrine. Uh, in fact, the oldest church in Walsingham, notice continuously operating church, is a Methodist Church because it was uh, it was an inexpensive brick building and there was no reason for anybody to want to take it down. I guess uh, you know Wesley actually preached at Walsingham and said if there's just been an ounce of decency in Henry, none of this would have happened. Well, Henry got to be a pretty big old guy, and there must have surely been at least an ounce of decency in him, but. The percentage was small. Uh, and I say that's, you know, it's, it's both sad that this is a division, and 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 I, I find a very encouraging thing that the devotion to Walsingham uh, has returned. Pope Leo the Third, a fascinating, a fascinating pope, despite how unpopular he is in some ways with a lot of Anglicans. Said, that when England returns to Walsingham, Our Lady will return to England. And he didn't say just Catholics, he said England. And I find that what is happening at Walsingham and the increasing devotion to Walsingham uh, to be very encouraging. Uh, you know, I may be, I may be Pollyanna here, but uh, Certainly the interest in Our Lady and the interest in Walsingham is greatly increasing and, and I'm going to make another video in October about that. Now I found it, you know, one of the things that is fascinating is that uh, Benedict XVI made it possible for Anglican Christians to uh, return to Catholicism without being subjected to the impoverished liturgy of uh, the Novus Ordo. Although in the customary of Our Lady of Walsingham, uh, it's marked as an important feast, there's actually not a proper for the feast. Uh, maybe some of you guys have some of the newer uh, ordinary books and can uh, can uh, fill me in on the propers. So I'm going to end this video with this colic.
from my favorite AOB. O God, who the mystery of the Word made flesh, tis in thy mercy sanctify the house of the blessed Virgin Mary. Do thou grant that we who honor her shrine at Walsingham may be kept aloof from the tabernacle of sinners and become worthy dwellers in thine house. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who ever liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen.